Well, um, let's talk about it. I think that we're, we've been hypnotized and conditioned into believing that, you know, we have to do something in order to have an experience in three-dimensional reality. And this is the plane of demonstration. So when we have the experience, the end product of an experience is an emotion, right? So that's the payoff. When you, when you have your abundance, when you have your new relationship, when you have your new career, you, you, you live in separation from the emotion until the experience occurs and then when the experience occurs it takes away the lack or separation of not having it nothing wrong with that that's the rules of three-dimensional reality and you can get really good at it you know you could go to school you can make the right choices you can learn from your mistakes you can be um, uh, trained to get better at it and you can develop skills and and you can you know you can accumulate resources and, and it can get easier for you but in the quantum if you're creating from the field instead of from matter, which is a broad conversation, you have to feel it uh, in order to experience it. Uh, mm. uh, uh, and so that's uh, that's kind of a reversal because most people will say, well, I'm not going to feel gratitude until my healing actually happens. Well, it turns out that you got to feel gratitude in order for the healing to happen. <laughs> and our data so shows that over and over again. So your body is uh, so objective that mm. when you feel the emotion before the experience it doesn't know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone the body's actually believing it's living in a new environment a new uh, 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 condition so it turns out it requires if, our, if you're looking at a secret sauce we've kind of whittled it down to a formula and it requires a clear intention and that is a vision of what you want to have happen. And that is selecting a new possibility, an unknown, that you would like to experience. Okay, so what does that require? That requires your brain being really coherent. So if we've isolated the process of being able to make your brain work better. And I, I talked to the brain scientists a few times and I said, tell me what percentage of people uh, that immerse themselves in an event for seven days, what percentage of those people do their, uh, do their brains get better? These, they said 100%, 100%. So we know that you can make your brain work better if you learn that formula. Okay, so now we have a clear intention, but that's only one element. There is another element that is the handmaiden to that, and that is an elevated emotion. Now, elevated emotion, I'm talking about, you can, so many people feel with every single body part, except their heart. I mean, that's just kind of a weird thing that we do as human beings. Well, you protect that, you know, it's uh, you being vulnerable in the jungle is means you're, you're more likely to be taken advantage of, you know, and you get bruised or injured in your life. Uh, you kind of learn from that and you got to you get you, you, you protect it, right? So in the creative process, the heart is the creative center, we have compelling data to show that once you open that heart of yours and it starts beating in a rhythm and a coherence, it actually informs the brain uh, it's safe to create. It actually tells the brain to mm. get creative and brain waves change. Mm. And so when you combine that coherent heart and elevated emotion and you start feeling the emotions before the experience, the heart actually produces an external magnetic field. Well, now you got a Wi-Fi signal. And that field could actually resonate with a coherent brain, the intent. And the thought is the electrical charge that sends the signal out. It's the directive. And the elevated emotion, that, that feeling is a magnetic charge. And we've got enough information to show that the heart's the magnet. So you're going to draw the experience to you with your heart. So when there's a kind of match in frequency between some potential in the quantum field, Mm -hmm. and what you would like to experience and you keep tuning in to that potential and you're you're actually creating from the field instead of from matter the rules change yeah, yeah. now you don't have to go anywhere mm -hmm. to get what you want somehow the experience finds you and it comes in unexpected and surprising ways to prove to you that you're actually a creator in your life and so true. when that occurs then it's no longer like I have to meditate it's actually like I'm not going to stop doing this because I don't want the magic to end. And an affirmation is a thought only. And it's an, an empty thought unless we put some energy into it. And the way we put that energy into it is by pumping, imbuing the energy of these lower energy centers, uh, our love for what we're thinking, or subconsciously, our fear of what we're thinking. 
And when we do that, when we marry the thought and the emotion together, they come together in this mysterious, magical, precious place right in the center of our hearts. And this is what the ancients say, this is where the action is. Uh, it's in our hearts, and by definition, we create a feeling. Feeling is the union of thought and emotion. The feeling is what creates the waves that speak to the, the field, the matrix in our universe. The feeling is what creates. So unless we have imbued our affirmation with the, fee or with the emotion of our love for our perfect mate that's manifesting now, or our abundance, or our healing, or the healing of our loved ones, they may become uh, just an empty thought. And, and for people who became frustrated with their affirmations, you know, they said, that, they said their affirmations 100,000 times a day and nothing happened. And then they, they lost interest. They felt disempowered. They felt like victims. They said, you know, that stuff doesn't work. It's because we only had half, half of, of the formula. formula. So the feeling is what actually creates and that's why, to me, it makes tremendous sense. If the feeling is what creates, then you've got to give that field something to work with so it can show you what it is that you're creating. Why not feel what it is that you'd like to experience so the field can give that back to you rather than feeling the things that you don't have or you don't want because that's the blueprint that the field gives back to you as well. It's a, a very subtle, uh, it's just a, mm, it's this little subtle shift from, uh, into thinking from the outcome rather than thinking from the place of lack and hoping something changes. So the feeling that we're creating is very closely associated with what we call belief. Belief and feeling both occur in the heart. When you have a belief about something, you've got usually really strong feelings about that belief. So you ask the question, is it, is it important to believe? Yes, it is. To the degree that we believe we are healed, to that degree, when we begin creating those kinds of patterns in our bodies, uh, our heart will send the signals to our brains saying this body is healed. And to meet that, the brain will flood the body with the chemistry that will uh, allow that healing. We've seen this documented medically. So that's inside of our bodies. The same principle now is being documented beyond our bodies. So the effect is not limited to our bodies. The field carries those effects beyond our bodies into our physical world, and in that way, we influence. And again, I'm not going to say the, the word control or, or manipulate. We're not imposing our will, but we do influence. We have the ability to influence the outcome of the events uh, in our lives.